The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of Spirit of Faith Family Church and J. Eberly Ministries. Join us for today's episode as Pastor Jay teaches on how you can have dominion over mental oppression. Jesus was attacked with wrong thoughts just like you and I are attacked with wrong thoughts. When he was getting ready to go to the cross, he had tremendous things come against him trying to tell him, don't do this, don't do this. Satan was tempting him. He, is, he had to resist that. And Satan will come against you and try to attack you. And there's times where it's like the pileup tactic, where it just comes and there's bombardment of, tax, of, of thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. If you don't answer it and deal with it, it become oppressive. And if you don't deal with the oppression, it will become something you become obsessed with and then depressed. And then if you're not careful, if you keep on allowing the enemies, he'll take as much ground as you allow him to have. But you also have the authority to answer it and say, no, I'm not taking that thought. I'm not going to live under that cloud anymore. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. No, see, I thought I had to go back to all that oppression and all of that stuff. No, no, I didn't have to go back to all that. I'm free, free, free. talk to you about dominion over oppression tonight. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we'll go here to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It tells us in the, uh, let's start in verse number three. Though we walk in the flesh, Paul said, we do not war after the flesh. Remember Paul said in Ephesians, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And uh, he goes on to say, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, we'd say physical or natural. But they are mighty through God. I'd say they're, they're greater than anything that comes against you. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They are mighty through God, not through you, but through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The body of Christ has kind of gotten off on that word, but look what it goes on to say, and you understand where the strongholds are. Casting down imaginations. Circle strongholds, then they circle imaginations. And then every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. A circle thought. So we've got thoughts, imaginations, and strongholds. This is how Satan works. This, these are his weapons. Um, he wants to, he'll bring thoughts to, to bring you captive. He wants to oppress you through wrong thoughts. And he wants you to uh, have, take on his imaginations. Actually, we'll read here in 2 Corinthians 11, if you go across the uh, page, about how he did this to Eve. Um, and we'll just start reading uh, in verse number two. Oh, let's just read verse three. This is 2 Corinthians eleven three. I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Now notice craftiness. The word beguile means to deceive. Through his craftiness. Subtlety means craftiness. So your mind, circle minds, should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. So what Satan did is he brought a thought to Eve and made a suggestion to her mind. And, and that thought and that suggestion that he brought caused her to start thinking about what God said and see it in a different light. Other than face value what he said, now she's thinking, now wait a minute, why did God say that? What did he mean? I mean, is he trying to keep something from me? Because that doubt that Satan brought was in the form of a thought and she took it hook, line, and sinker. And the Bible says Satan deceived Eve. I have sat and watched things enter into people's minds. They didn't even know it entered in. As soon as the devil brings something, that doesn't mean you take it. You, at that moment, you can decide whether you take in what he says or his suggestion or his fear or when the doctor says it's cancer, you've got six months to live or, or whenever there's a bad report come and you, now it's going to cost you $10,000 or something of that nature. Something, something came up and whenever that heaviness tries to get on you and those thoughts keep bombarding you, don't sit there and think, well, that's just natural. I go through this sometimes. No, no. The Bible says to answer these things. The enemy wants to oppress you. 
in your mind, in your intellect, in your emotions. Can you say amen? amen? And this is the way he does it. He brings thoughts. And people describe it sometimes as a result of these thoughts coming where they're entertaining these thoughts. They talk about a dark cloud hanging over them. They'll talk about just like a heaviness. Or they'll say something like, it's like, it's like there's a weight on my chest. It's like, it's like there's, I need, deli they'll say, I need deliverance. Well, uh, if they're a believer uh, and uh, so forth, Satan starts this stuff from out here. <clears throat> you don't need help. <clears throat> uh, I mean, you can get help, but you don't need, you're going to have to learn to stand on your own. You should learn to answer these things because, uh, because you have dominion over Satan when he brings these thoughts. Hallelujah. All right, so Satan beguiled Eve through his uh, subtlety or craftiness. He said, Paul said, I don't want that to happen to you or he'll, uh, your minds will be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Satan wants to corrupt your mind with his thoughts. Now, how do you know you've taken Satan's thoughts? <clears throat> Without constantly washing your mind in the water of the Word, you'll, you'll actually take thoughts you didn't even realize were the enemy. Because he's crafty, he's subtle. Can you say amen? amen? And what these are are weapons of his warfare against you. We read that there in tenth, the 10th tenth chapter. Tenth chapter. The weapons of our warfare, though, against them are mighty to pull these things down. Now, Satan will come with a thought. Then notice he'll, whenever we take that thought and begin to entertain it in our mind, it becomes an imagination. And then whenever it becomes an imagination and we continue to allow that imagination to dominate us, it can become a stronghold. And that's when people feel like, I, I need some help, I can't get free. Actually, you can still deal with it in the stronghold arena yourself. Absolutely can. Uh, we'll see how far we can get into this tonight. But I wanted you to see that. Now come over in Luke's Gospel, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> when Jesus in the wilderness was tempted, <clears throat> it says... Satan said unto him in verse number four, um, I'm sorry, in verse number three, he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. Notice Satan, uh, Jesus heard Satan talking to him. Now, if you looked in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, I don't remember the verse, 13, 14, 16, down and through there somewhere. It says we, were, we, we, we are tempted in all points like as he was. Like as he was. He's our example of how to overcome temptation. Well, if, we were t if we're tempted as he was, as, and in all areas like he was, then uh, how many times does Satan appear to you? Most of the times it comes in thoughts. You understand what I'm talking about? And when Jesus was tempted of the enemy here, he had these thoughts. I believe he had these thoughts come to him. Because how many of you know it's not that much of a temptation when you actually see us being talking to you? Because then you know it's the devil. But see, the devil likes to hide. He doesn't like to, he doesn't want you to know that it's him talking to you. Amen. Uh, and if he can uh, talk to you without him, without you realizing it's him, then you'll take it much quicker. And so I believe that's what Satan did here. And it says it happened three times. You go down through there and uh, see how the devil tempted him three different times. You'll find out that Jesus was attacked with wrong thoughts, just like you and I are attacked with wrong thoughts. When he was, going, when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, uh, getting ready to go to the cross, he had tremendous things come against him, trying to tell him, don't do this, don't do this. Satan was tempting him. He, is, he had to resist that. And Satan will come against you and try to attack you as well as, as Jesus. And there's times where it's like the pile-up tactic. Where it just comes and there's bombardment of, tax, of, of thoughts, thoughts, thoughts along the same line. I mean, and it, it, will, it will, if you don't answer it and deal with it, it will become oppressive. And if you don't deal with the oppression, it will become something you become obsessed with. And then depressed. And then if you're not careful, if you keep on allowing the enemies, he'll take as much ground as you allow him to have. Although you have authority over him, and you can answer the thoughts that he brings with the word, yet he'll take any ground you give him because you're still a free moral agent even though you're a believer and have authority over him. You can have anything you want. You can have oppression if you want it. Are you listening to me? But you also have the authority to answer it and say, no, I'm not taking that thought. I'm not going to live under that cloud anymore. 
No, sir, no, ma'am. I lived under that long enough. It was in the denomination I grew up with. It was in the home I grew up in. And that's what I was fighting whenever the, the enemy kept telling me, you have to go back to Pennsylvania. You have to go back there and help those people. I mean that thing that came against me. The enemy tried to harass me, trying to tell me I was the one that had to deliver all those people from all that. Well, uh, the, my roommate, I don't know if I ever told you that story, how my roommate just said something was wrong because I'm laying up there in the bed and I'm, holding my head, I'm hurting, you know, the devil's just pounding me because it's getting to the end of Ramah and he's trying to tell me, now you got to go back and set all them free people free. Well, see, if they want to be free, you can set them, but a lot of them don't want to be free. I talked to them, some of them about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and coming on over into some greater things and none of them wanted it. Amen. That's why they opened the door to the enemy. I'm, I'm preaching better than your amen. Amen. Listen, if you don't walk on into the light, you open the door to the devil. Absolutely. So uh, I'm not wishing it upon anybody. I don't, I, don't, I don't enjoy watching people in bondage. That's not my point. But my point is you and I can, can just keep on walking on whether somebody else is going to go with us or not. <laughs> but the enemy kept telling me you got to go back. And finally my roommate came up there because Pastor Debbie and I weren't married. This is before I graduated from Ramah. Um, and I had a roommate, you know. And uh, he came up and he said something was wrong and he got his finger, he, the Holy Ghost came on him and he started saying, the Lord's doing a new thing, forget the former things, the, you know, that verse over in Isaiah, he started quoting that to me. And I mean, the power of God came on me, I start, that thing started breaking off of me and I started laughing, I said, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. No, see, I thought I had to go back to all that oppression and all of that stuff. No, no, I didn't have to go back to all that. I'm free, free, free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know you're not usually or oftentimes the one that will be able to reach your relatives? You know, God will send other people. So I've been praying for him and God's been sending other people. But I had to do what God called me to do. Anyway, so uh, I grew up with that kind of oppression. It affected our marriage at the first part of our marriage. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'd go through cycles where that thing would come try to get on me and I would become, I, would be, I wasn't as nice a person at that time. Listen, don't, don't be looking at me. You got to admit, you've done the same thing. <laughs> How many of you are honest in here tonight? Amen, absolutely. And you, you ever wonder why some people, they seem to have a split personality? Like at one time, they're real sweet and loving and the next day, they, you, they're, they're a different person. They're mean and nasty and... And every day you go see it, whether it's at work or wherever it is, every day you don't know which one of them's going to show up today. You know anybody like that? Let's not, let's not uh, just suppose what that is. I'll tell you what it is. It is satanic oppression is what it is. Listen, and as you and I grow, that becomes less and less a part of our lives. We were just talking about it the other day. Pastor Debbie and I were talking how that's not a part of our marriage like it used to be a part of our marriage. It doesn't have to be where every three weeks one of, them, one of you gets under oppression and you turn into a different person or something like that. As you grow spiritually and learn to walk in dominion over this oppressive stuff that comes, you can, uh, you can have just an even keel personality and not all depressed and, and heavy and... Where you're emo you can't express your emotions or something. I know some Christians that need to either go to a football game or a ball game or something and just get radical, just go, Wah! or something. Come on, sir, come on. Because they don't have any expression. And listen, that's not healthy. That's not healthy. I shouldn't let this out, but I'm going to tell you. Yesterday, we were in a planning meeting for the Men of Honor meeting in May. You guys, don't, don't forget it. It's going to be fun. Amen. But anyway, we were playing, and, and they came up with an idea playing. We got, we got these, this, all this land to have fun on, you know. So we're going to play Capture the Flag at night, man. We're going to. And I hope the guys get beside themselves flat, silly, sappy, having fun. That's healthy. Not all this stoic depression, you know, fearfulness of what people are going to think. We don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> Amen. 
Tell your neighbor, go ahead and let it out. You need to enjoy this life. I don't, I don't want to get to heaven and the first thing Jesus said was, why were you so sad? Why were you so sad? Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Did you read the end of the book, Jesus? I don't want him to say, Did, didn't you read the end of the book? Didn't you read the end of the book? Here's the end of the book. He won, we won. Here, zoom in on that. That's the end of the book. We all won. Yeah. If, if you, uh, Miss Kate McVeigh, friend of ours, she was talking about, you ever heard her tell the story about the time she watched Evander Holyfield? She, she, uh, she thought it was a live fight. Didn't know it was a, uh, what was it, a pay-per-view or a rerun or something, whatever it was. And so she's all, she's like, oh my goodness. And she didn't know he already won. So she's nervous the whole time and anxious. And she found out three-fourths of the way through that, that he had already won. And this was a rerun or whatever they call it. After that, she's like, yeah, he won. Hey, now the whole time, doesn't matter if he gets punched. She's like, I know the end of the book. I know the story. I know the end of the story. And we just told you that the end of the story is. So the whole way through this ride, we can enjoy it. Amen. Amen. Two big expenses came up this week on the building. We got to do some things to help protect it and everything, keep the rain out. And I just came in tonight, just decided I'm going to keep the joy anyhow. (laughs) Because I could feel that that oppression trying to get on me. And I said, no, no, I know better. I know better. So, um, hallelujah. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He's, he's out here in the atmosphere, and uh, if you wonder if he's, he's influencing anybody, the next time you stop at a stoplight and look over at the person beside you, you won't have a question anymore. <laughs> there are a lot of people that are stoic and anxious and bound, and I'm not trying to make fun of them. There's, there's deliverance for them. Amen. Amen. How many... <laughs> Sometimes I have to watch it when I'm in public because either Pastor Debbie and I are out to eat or down at Lowe's buying her some more tools or something. She's getting, she's getting into tools. And we're just over there having a joyful time. And, you know, every now and then I turn and I see people just sort of staring at us. It's like, why are y'all so happy? It's like, oh, I forgot y'all are bound. <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Hmm. And sometimes when you hear a bad report or or some sort of, you know, attack against you, your finances or something comes or something like that, it always comes with a mental attack. It always comes with something tries to get, tries to weigh down your your mind and your thoughts and your emotions. You don't have to live under that anymore. It's legal not to be sad. Amen. Amen. It's okay to be happy to where people wonder what's up. What's wrong with you, you know? (laughs) Amen. I had to learn to be an Iowan because when I first came here, I was used used to Tulsa where uh, you go through the store and everybody, you know, you're walking down the aisle and somebody else coming the other way. Hi, how you doing? It's it's like an old lost friend, you know? He's like, you almost want to say, how are the kids? You know, it's just like... Not quite, but it was, it was much different than here. So I get here, and I'm like, hi, how you doing? And they look at you like... <laughs> That's oppression, whether you know it or not. Hallelujah. Some people have lived under this for so long that they don't even realize that, that their personality has changed. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I remember distinctly for a particular person that uh, got under some of this stuff. 
And uh, I had been praying for him. And I remember a distinct experience where I had got over into the spirit and I saw the thing oppressing them. And I addressed it. Next time I saw them, they told me all about what happened, how, how, the, how, the, how that something lifted off of them and that they had been set free. See, that's how real this stuff is to me. This is not a figment of your imagination. This is spiritual. These things are spiritual. You understand what I'm talking about? And so we've got to learn that uh, these things are real. Demons do exist. This, in our culture, people don't want to talk about it. Um, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. You've been watching the news lately. Some of these people that are all up in arms, they, there's something wrong with them. Oh, yeah. If you don't have any spiritual perception at all, it's like, you're not right. You're not right. When you bring a bag of your own feces and throw it on people, you are not right. I'm trying to be nice about this, but you need deliverance. You need, you need Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I'll just stop right there. Hallelujah. So, um, but these things are very real. They exist. Satan is active in the earth. When you hear people talk, when they arrest a guy that shoots somebody up and say, well, I watch, was watching these horror movies and something got a hold of me and I just something kept telling me to do this, kill loved ones or something like that, that's demonic. That's not just, that's not just natural or something. That's demonic. Isn't that right? So these things are real. Um, we have an adversary. The Bible said he's our adversary, the devil. And so he's going about, he's trying to get into people's lives. And he contacts you and I through the flesh and through the mind. He's not in our spirit. He can't contact us there. But he'll try to come from this out, this, the air. He's in the prince of the power of the air. He'll try to contact us with suggestions or oppressions against, uh, against our body. Am I making any sense? God didn't create evil. Satan fell to this condition he's in. And uh, what God created was good. But these are fallen spirits. The Bible says they, uh, they seek to embody people. They try to get into people's lives, probably because they are disembodied spirits. And to get a greater range of expression in this earth, they want to get into people, and they'll try through pers the person's mind or their, their body. That's right. You know as well as I do, if he can get into somebody, then he can speak through their voice. And, and talk through them and influence others and spread, cause them to say wrong things. And you realize not everybody that's oppressed is walking around with looking, looking like a wild man with their eyes rolled back in their head. Some people look normal until they open their mouth. Yeah. I saw a video the other day of somebody, some guy just got on a plane and some lady got and started acting out and they had to kick her off the plane. They had the police come and kick her off the plane. I mean, I mean, that's not normal. That's, that's not normal. <laughs> I mean, people don't think America has demonic activity. You, you need to open your eyes a little bit more. These are what we have authority over these things. Thank God. They don't have to get into us and uh, be buzzing around our head like, like buzzing around their head. Remember, remember, we've talked in the past about the psalmist said, He anoints my head with oil. And we talked about how that oil was a scented oil that kept flies from crawling up into their nasal cavity and, and depositing their larvae because that's warm and it'll, it'll cause those larvae to hatch. And then that, those larvae will be inside, the, they crawl up in there and they get in their head and they make the, make the sheep, you know, butt their head because something's irritating them and, and they're hitting, you know, other sheep. And, you know what I'm talking about? That's what that oil on their head was all about. Well, you and I don't have to have things buzzing around our head like the world has buzzing around their head out there. We don't have to look like Pigpen in the cartoon. Tell me I'm preaching all right. The Bible says He gives us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Satan wants to make you unsound. He wants to make you tormented. He wants to make you uh, to, to where you're, you're, you're speaking things that are mean and divisive and, and, and those sorts of things. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? But uh, these are fallen spirits that are trying to oppress man and trying to take over down here. Amen. 
We got authority over these things. You and I must learn to exercise authority. But if we don't take control of our thought life, then we'll still be giving place to him, even though we might say, be saying, Satan, I, I, I don't want you to do that or something like that. You have to answer the thoughts that he brings with the word of God. These evil spirits are personalities. Amen. And when they influence man or embody man, they make the man what they are. There's different kinds of evil spirits. We've, we've studied this in the past. Amen. And people can be more or less oppressed at different times. You understand? Uh, that's what I went through whenever we first got married. Well, actually before that, but then whenever we got married. Um, you know, there, there were just things that would try to get a hold of me again. And at the time, I wasn't strong enough to keep that from getting back in. I've grown and I've developed my, my faith and I've renewed my mind more and I'm continuing to keep that uh, progression going because all I got to do is relax and, and give in a little bit and stuff starts getting back in on me. You know, I'm talking about myself, not to be mean on you, but I've seen it on some of you. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mean on you because I'm talking about myself too. I remember one particular individual in the congregation, it started, ooh, that, that's not good, that's not, uh. They're going to be causing division if they keep yielding to that. And I said, I started praying for them, you know. And the Lord said, they're going to, you just keep praying for them. They'll grow out of it. And I've been watching them. It's been wonderful watching them. Less and less they yield to that. And more and more, they're their normal self. It is possible to live worry-free. It is part of the abundant life God provided for us as his children. In order to experience God's supply, you must break the bad spiritual habit of taking the cares of life. In this book, Pastor Jay walks you through the practical steps to experiencing the peace of God. Order Living Without Worry Free from a Troubled Heart for only $13 at soffc.org and take control of your life. Next week on Spirit of Faith Today. Rather than take the thought when it comes, because remember Jesus said, take no thought saying. We got to guard what thoughts we're taking. Every mind needs a bouncer by the doors. We've said that in the past. Well, you check the ID before you allow a thought in. Scripture and verse, please. Where, where is this in the Bible? If you check it and it's fear, it's like, no, you can't be in here. I'm not taking fear thoughts. If you can learn not to take the thoughts and turn them over in your mind, then you can keep the, yourself from going down that rabbit trail, so to speak, or getting in that rut and then answer the thought. It's an honor for me to come into your home every week and minister to you the Word of God. But this broadcast is designed to introduce you to a greater purpose. And that is that you be meaningfully connected to a local body of believers in fellowship, worship, and feeding on the Word of God. I want to invite you to come to Spirit of Faith Family Church Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. This is a body of believers that's growing in faith, and moving with the Holy Ghost. So come, be a part of our services. You can go on our website, soffc.org, and get directions, learn more about our services, and we'll do our best when you come to make you feel right at home. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by friends and partners of Spirit of Faith Family Church and J. Eberly Ministries.